there was, I just ate like some chicken tenders at the thing. I was like super fucking hungry. So I wind up in a Friday's dude. Cause it's the one thing open at like 1 AM on a Thursday. And like, I'm in a Friday's like around the corner from my house. I'm like eating dinner at like midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And then all of a sudden I've just been like, I don't know. I just, it's just been not great. So shit, you got me. I don't know if that's irony or satire. <laughs> uh, I think we're primed and ready. Uh, let me go ahead and bring us in. No, that's a cold open. That's cold open. Regular kids. What stuff? Welcome to a special episode of Regular Dudes Watch Stuff. I'm one of your hosts, a regular dude, Jamie G. Esquire, the fifth. And I'm here with Magna Mills to talk about season two of Yellow Jackets from Showtime. Boy, they were yellow and not a lot of jackets. I mean, there was no there was no morning jacket. There was a I forget the uh, there's a Venture Brothers joke uh, with the. Uh, uh, shell of gravy about the uh, the jacket the, the the jacket video but yeah you know and hopefully you're jacking it to regular dudes watch stuff i am meg mills thank you for checking this out you can find us wherever you get your pods and on youtube or on social media at dudes watch stuff please do not forget about the people stranded in the woods and don't forget about the flaps follow like and please subscribe that's what helps people find our show and our channel we greatly appreciate it Please and thank you. If you had fun, give us that thumb. And, you know, if you're in a plane crash, don't be dumb. Uh, you mean like breaking the and black box? That yep, that would. And then yeah, telling somebody about that after you did it. All very oh, bad Misty. ideas. And uh, Jamie G uh, warned us why we shouldn't talk about that yet. Yeah, and Misty, we love you. This is your obligatory spoiler warning. Uh, yeah, we're spoiling shit. All previous episodes of Yellow Jackets, as well as any interviews and whatnot, it's all up for fair discussion here. Please just remember, don't say we didn't warn you. We're warning you. We're spoiling shit. If you're not up to date, bow out, and uh, we'll see you on the flip. Peace. Yeah, they eat people. They eat people. Uh, let's start off by kind of setting <laughs> the stage here. I binged season one of Yellow Jackets uh, shortly after, well, maybe a month after it finally came out. I heard good things about it. Really loved it. Watched it again maybe once or twice. Then uh, watched season two week to week as it came out live. We covered the pilot episode of Yellow Jackets on a previous episode. Actually, almost our pilot episode, our second episode of Regular Dudes Watched Up. But that was before season two began where I was trying to suck people into it. And uh, Jamie G, I think I succeeded in sucking you into it. So tell me about your Yellow Jackets experience as far as watching after that pilot up through the end of season two, how you did it, what you thought. Yeah, look, man, you, you definitely sucked me into it. You know, and it wasn't just you had another dude. Shout out Funk Dr. Spot. Um, you know, Funk was like, yo, dude, you got to check this thing. I checked it. He gave me the kind of heads up. I'm like, dude, it will appeal to you. Kind of that 90s vibe of like being in high school in the 90s, which we were. And it definitely appealed to me from just the soundtracks killer. But dude, the more I got into this, we watched that first one. I was like, yo, I'm curious as shit. Like there's a lot going on here. And they've been able to kind of bridge this gap and do it so perfectly of like life as the teens facing this plane crash that's a show in and of itself and the teenage actors and actresses coupled with then they bring in the modern day shit with the adult versions and how that meshes is just really really well done i thought season one was outstanding season two was great i am beyond excited for season three i thought the introduction of some new characters that weren't part of the plane crash or the yellow jacket um soccer team plot line uh was really key in season three i thought they did a great job with that most notably elijah wood he was fantastic um yeah we're really excited about where they're going with the story i pretty much track with everything you said i think that it's a very tricky needle that they're th trying to thread here with the two timelines basically because everything that happens in the early storyline has to have an impact on the later storyline but also they need to work thematically together this is something that lost did very well at their peak and i think yellow jackets have done a very good job of it too i like how they develop some of these secondary characters in bringing in some of the older versions of the younger characters we met already i think that all you know worked really well for me 
Well, and it's fun, right? Because now it's like, all right, season two, we didn't know Van was alive in season one, adult Van, right? Who will we, we didn't, we, we, we got teased uh, with, with um, Lottie, Lottie at the end, the end yeah. one, right? But we didn't know for out the majority of season one that she was alive. We really thought it was just the three or four of them, right? So I think it's really cool. And I'm curious to see if they decide to go back into the well, what if coach is still alive? Right. Like that would be a wild thing. Like I'm curious to see if there's going to be more people still alive in season three. I like that. They've done that. You're right. They're threading a thin line, but so far they've done it really well. Any overall thoughts on season two? Let's just start with, did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? I mean, anything in particular that stood out for you, good or bad. Jamie G as far as season two, I enjoyed it overall. I think it was probably the logical expansion from what season one was. I don't know if they took a giant leap forward, but I enjoyed season one so much that they, it was already a really good show for me. So I don't, it would be, you know, very hard to take maybe a major leap at this point. I thought the plotting was pretty good. The music was great as always. The performances were great as always. Maybe the pacing was a little bit touch and go at times. I enjoyed the new characters for the most part. I am a little bit worried that the uh, police plot will stray into Barry territory. Jesus I want the police to kind of still be a threat or there to be some kind of threat that's maybe not just the supposed supernatural or each other. I just want them to, you know, maybe just, uh, you know, we want to know what the rules are, I guess would be the... Uh, the way to put it but for the most part definitely enjoyed season two i would say it was a solid continuation of season one probably a slight improvement but not a dramatic step forward uh jbg what do you think as far as season two overall and uh you know any thoughts on season one versus season two well i you know season one was is always going to be really hard to top just because of it was so new so raw so well done there hasn't been a ton of shows recently that have done this kind of like two time frame kind of shows and having them blend together the way that this show does. I think it takes a lot of skill from a writing and directing standpoint and casting. I mean, I just can't say enough about how well they've done with the casting, both in season one and season two from, from teenage version to adult version. It's been fantastic. I thought season two, some of the, some of the plot lines, they kind of a little bit more yada yada than season one. There wasn't as much suspense maybe as season one, but I thought it was really good and I still enjoyed it a lot. And the way it ended has me so excited for season three. And yes, this is a spoiler show. I'm not going to lie, man. I shed a tear a little bit when Natalie died at the end. Like I love Natalie, like teenage Natalie is fucking awesome. And adult Natalie was played so well. Like she absolutely crushes. That was an epic way to kind of end the season. I'm so excited. Yeah, there were some plot holes and you can dig in and, and kind of nitpick things. But I, overall, I think this is a really good show. Yeah, probably nothing overt. And it's one of those shows right, where somebody probably has to die to give it legitimacy. If all the main characters keep kind of missing death, it eventually, like, you know, minor spoiler alert here, Game of Thrones, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But one of the problems with Game of Thrones is it was, a, it was initially a show that established anybody could die. And then by the time you hit about like season five or six, you kind of knew like no one would die anymore. It was just like the no one know, could the, die. Some Whoever Wiley Roadrunner, die, Wiley die. Coyote kind of shit. It was ridiculous. It'd be one thing if that's how the show was the whole time, but they had set up that people could die. I think to make this show really land, the threat has to come true at some point. And they do a good job with that. You know, you lose Juliette Lewis one of you know maybe the biggest actress on the show when it began at least pretty close to the top so that's a big deal and shout out yeah you're right uh you know the young version of her is absolutely outstanding teen yeah, natalie, dude, teen natalie, natalie is sophie thatcher shout out sophie thatcher she is great like tell me you weren't in high school and like would have loved natalie like she's she's so cool dude like she's dope like that's like going to school in the now walk the line on that one but yes i understand why high school me would have loved a girl who kind of seems like she could, you know, fit in with every crowd. That's really 100%. cool. And, dude, we, we get a couple of new additions here in the cast in Season 2. Let's break them down right here, right now on Regular Dudes Watch Stuff. Uh, you brought up Walter. You know, we got, we got our man Frodo in here, Elijah Wood. Uh, I especially loved him in uh, Wilfred. Shout out if you've ever seen Wilfred. Very weird FX show. Enjoyed it very much. 
he's kind of creepy but super confident right it, it's a certain character type do you I, I shouldn't even say do you think he is i should say what do you think he is because is he all surface level is there something deeper does he have another motivation here uh, what do you think about walter and that in lies such an amazing kind of concept to the storyline with a new character it's so hard to introduce a new character and have this much question around him and i applaud the show for doing it and i think just the way the uh, way the elijah wood is throughout this entire season like when he's when he's trying to like interrogate you know the the uh the buddy of the husband of, of shannon or whatever and then he's you know and then he's kind of like at the end you see him like kind of like legit like manipulating police officers and like hiding evidence he kills a police officer without hesitation it's pretty wild dude to see his his advance but he does it all in the same and they make him so soft with the with the classical show tunes and shit like that like i don't know dude but i really like it i think it took this show it needed it and a show that has so much they kind of ran its course with a lot of the shit with like let's just say the wife and the family of Thaisa, we thought that was going to be a big thing in season one. It kind of faded in season two with the son and the wife. I think that a show that had so much going on, they needed to be really smart about who they chose to be involved as a character and what it could do. And they nailed it here, didn't they? Yeah, I think they did. And I agree. I think Walter is going to play a fairly big role going forward. Uh, kind of you started talking about Thaisa there. And that kind of leads into our introduction of adult Van. When Thais is like other personality, we don't, uh, you know, is she, uh, I, we don't have a good nickname for her other Thaisa, Night Tie, Night Tie, I guess. I don't know. But she kind of gets her hitchhiking out there and she meets adult Van, I believe, played by Laura Ambrose. What did you think about both the introduction of adult Van and then finding out ultimately that she's apparently dying of cancer? She at least says she is. Whoever's doing the casting for the show deserves a some sort of award cool. like <laughs> the good star like whatever an award like an actual award like an emmy Can't yes emmy. but like the casting in this show is unbelievable as soon as i saw her i was like oh that's fan 100 i thought it was awesome the way they introduced her um there was some plot holes with taisa kind of going there like because they do this whole thing with taisa we're hitting a peak with her visions and her kind of other personality and then they get in the car accident the wife's like on her deathbed the kid's like by himself and then nothing she just bounces for days like who the and she was just elected a state senator and she was just elected state senator like a lot of plot holes with this but i like that it led to van i thought van was awesome and i think that they they found something here where they can do this once a season maybe and introduce a new character and i think that's really cool and they can they can tease it by the teenage year plot line and then introduce the adult. I think that's awesome. And I, I'm really looking forward to see if they do that in season three. Yeah, there's again shades of lost here in ways that they did that. I, I like the way that they presented Van, you know, the scars, the the whole like VHS DVD, like old school store, the idea that she's kind of stuck back in that time, maybe before they went, or maybe she's fixated on what they missed in the rest of their youth or something like that. I'm very curious as to where they go with this. But again, shout out Lauren Ambrose. I, I thought it was all very interesting. The other main addition I think we get here in his adult is the adult Lottie. We get her teased, like you said, at the end of season one. We find her here in season two, and she is on some level legitimately either crazy or seeing things, right? She imagines an entire therapist. And you get the idea that she's been going to this therapist for a while. So she's been having regular meetings with an imaginary part of her or a different personality of her or whatever. And she is more or less a cult leader here. It doesn't seem like she is a, uh, you know, drink Kool-Aid and die type of super evil cult leader, but it doesn't seem that she's, you know, entirely altruistic either. What do you think about adult Lottie, man? At the end of the day, do you think she had anything to do with Travis's death or was that just, you know, kind of a byproduct of her guilt? I think she did without knowing but she's led on by her own insanity and i don't know that she's totally insane as much as just plugged in but it's a combination of two and i think she kind of led travis down the road like she had a weird relationship with travis and i think the show did a great job of showing kind of in the teenage years of this weird kind of relationship and and not control but 
influence she had over Travis. And I think that that kind of bled its way through into into his ultimate de demise, where she had some influence and she kind of played a part in it, whether she wanted to or not. I don't think it was malicious, but I think she played a role. A uh, little bit of an ask here. When it comes to the future season three, season four, do you actually want to say get a flashback and see what actually happened to Travis that night when he supposedly hung himself? Is that something you feel like we need to see? I would like more to this. I think they 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 kind of. I mean, or even if we hear about it, let's say one or the other, we at least need to see it. Or like, but how would we know the truth if we don't see it, right? I feel it's one of those kind of Rashomon things. Like, unless we actually see what happened, how would we know what anyone is saying is the truth? Because we don't even know who was there. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think we need to see it. I think we need to hear about it. I think they need like this became a bit. This was a big deal. T so much. Who the fuck is Lottie Matthews? the whole bank account thing now that natalie's dead like i don't want this storyline to die i want them to figure out kind of like what happened here was it was it just travis in his own mind finally you know kind of succumbing to everything that was in his mind or was it something more because it made it seem like it was something more i wanted to deliver on that plot line yeah because the cops were kind of bullshit right like it was immediately a suicide and then you know people are kind of easily able to poke holes in it and shit so Kind of just goes back to the cops being, you know, worryingly kind of bullshit on this show a little bit. And we've seen, we've done a lot of shows on regular dudes watch stuff just in, in, in our overall universe where sometimes the cops are bullshit. They tried to make the cops smart here. We saw a couple of things here with, with the bull from high school and then the new dude who was in search party. He was in search party. Um, he plays a cop here. He kind of influences the kid, lies. He's kind of breaks the rules to kind of figure it out. I thought that they made him somewhat competent, but at the end, that last episode was kind of like, they got totally played, right? I mean. Yeah, the idea that Walter, you know, maybe he's a little bit of a super hacker, kind of that's a little bit too much, the way he can like plant incriminating money and hack into banks and shit without any trace. I don't know if I buy that, but the cops especially, realistically, any kind of thing where you know, the, the cop was doing what he was doing and kind of creeping on the Cali and everything. That was just a, a bridge too far, I think. I do not know that any of that would have been admissible and it could have been, you know, grounds for dismissal. But I would say that this brings bigger roles for Cali, especially, and for Jeff, uh, Shauna's husband. I think they are both kind of my stealth MVPs of the season. That's why I don't mind when they kind of inextricably end up at the compound at the end of the season it's like really should they have really been there like how does kelly get out in the woods and all that but i don't mind because i really enjoyed their development the idea of kelly she found the driver's license when they tried to burn it and everything and jeff just keeps trying to cover but he did make the original mistake of actually trying to you know blackmail his wife's friends so I really did enjoy all of that. What do you think about how they handled kind of the ramifications of the, you know, uh, death of the dude, Adam, and, you know, everything that came from that? They chose to involve Callie early kind of in this show, right? And once they did, it, they kind of had to own it. I like that they owned it, and it's now a big deal with Jeff. It also gave Jeff something to do. After Jeff's kind of like running the running the scam on him so to speak the blackmail thing and the and the is he cheating thing there kind of wasn't a lot left for jeff i really like the jeff kelly plot line does he still so owe me, money to that chick though i wonder to loan shark have they actually paid that he off? says he paid her off I don't, uh, he, uh, all right so he, he he said he did i mean we'll see if he actually did but i guess my thing is um, i think it paid off in that regard i'd like to see him you know continue to kind of have them paired up a little bit because i think it just gives both something to do yeah i i don't mind that i enjoy uh both of the actors and you know jeff is kind of the only other male we have in the you know forward timeline at this point so it's definitely interesting and i wonder if we'll ever get to see the younger version of him again magna mills let's circle back around to present day timeline a bit I want to talk about some of that shit and and some of the stuff that went down at the cabin, man. This was this was a wild season. A lot of shit happened. If you go back, like at the beginning of the season, just remember the whole bit where Sean is initially kind of like talking to Jackie's corpse. What do you think Sean was trying to work through there as far as was it her guilt over Jackie or kind of her 
a nervousness about her, you know, impending, the impending birth of her child. Well, I mean, this is going to be an obvious Jamie G answer, and that's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Look, dude, this is something, the way Jackie dies, essentially on a fight with Shauna, this is a big deal, dude. Like, she has a lot of guilt. I absolutely love how the show brought the actress back and had her play into it to the point of directing her to eat her. I, I just, I love that. Like, because, you know, they talk about when you're in the desert and you see the you see the facade, you see the thing where it's like, okay, the, the mirage or whatever. But honestly, dude, like there's a whole thing when you're trapped in the wilderness and you're hungry, right? Like, don't think that that doesn't affect you here too. And I, I thought this was really well done, how they did this. Just teenagers trying to work through guilt, trying to work through sadness, trying to like, the whole plot line with Shannon, dude, she's pregnant with Jackie's boyfriend's kid. She shunned off Jackie. Jackie froze to death. Like, th this was, I think they needed this. They couldn't just do nothing, right? No. I mean, Shauna was in a, a real bad place here. And I did like that they acknowledged what was going on. At, at points, I believe Jackie even is like, well, you should know I'm a part, you know, I'm just a figure of your imagination. And it just leads to everything we get with Shauna, with the birth of her baby. What did you think about that whole bit? I mean, that was pretty crazy, right? Did you, I mean, I shouldn't say buy it, but, you know, they go through the whole thing where you see the baby's been born. And then there's one thing that happens and you find out that it was a stillborn birth. And that was a pretty powerful episode. One of my favorites of the season you know, we knew Shauna had to have that baby at some point and that, the, you know, as far as we knew, it didn't make it back into the 2020 timeline. How do you feel about the way they handled that? I thought they handled this really well. Uh, for me, I like that they chose to do this alternate world where everything would have been perfect for Shauna. And she had to see that, then come to the realization that it was dead, but also question whether or not the, the, the team, the people in the cabin had something to do with it. She saw him eating the baby. Like, I love that they teased kind of those visions throughout the episode, throughout the season, and then went to those visions here. And it made it believe, like, for a second, you thought as a viewer, did that really happen? Or was that just Shauna envisioning it? And I thought that I, that's hard to do, dude. Like, and they nailed it here. It was interesting the way they did it. So it wasn't like a letdown. I like how they did this here, and I think it just adds to the complexity of how messed up all these kids are, including Shauna. Like, she she seems to go through some shit and be okay. No, bro. Like, this is something she never recovers from, and I like that for the show. Yeah, you definitely see that, especially, I think, more towards the beginning of the first season, where you kind of get the idea of what her home life actually looks like, and she gets frustrated and kills the rabbit and everything. Uh, very good stuff with that. How about Javi, man? We kind of see him return. We don't get a ton of payoff other than him tipping off people about where he might have been. And then he ultimately dies so that Natalie can live. What do you think about the Javi of it all? I like that it came to fruition with Natalie dying at the end. I think they had to kill Natalie at the end to make that worth it. I like that they paid this off. One thing I wanted more of is like, was there some supernatural shit with Javi? I hope that they dive into that in season three with flashbacks. They have the ability to still use Javi as a character and still use him in the teenage life. So I'm curious to see if they dive into that and we find out more about that. We saw Coach discover that underground tree uh, kind of root system. I wonder if that's where he was hiding. I want to see more of that in season three. And I don't have any reason to think that we won't. So, so far, I, I, I'm happy with it. But that's based on my, you know, anticipation that they're going to do something in, in season three, kind of with this storyline. I 100% agree in that if they never tell us anything, we get just basically maybe just a little bit of inference about when, you know, Coach finds that little uh, under the tree there. That's not enough for me. I would love to have just one flashback episode where we kind of get to see what happened from when Javi disappeared to when he showed back up again, right? 
Like I would be cool yeah. even if that's the entire episode for the most part. And it's, you know, one of those deals. We've seen shows do that, right? Where they go and they kind of give us this whole backstory of a character and it's mostly them for the entire episode. I would be totally cool with getting a hobby episode that does that, you know, either season three, season four, five, whatever. I don't think it'll run past that, but somewhere in there, I'd like to get that. Agreed. And uh, what do you think about Misty telling Crystal about her destroying the black box and then killing her after, but then we never find her body. We never see her body when they go back. Could she still be out there? What do you think is going on? And, uh, you know, what does that mean that Misty told her, but obviously no one else still seems to know that? Well, I'll tell you one thing, dude. I really like what this did for the development of Misty's character. I think they basically pot committed to Misty being a big character, both in adult and in teenage years. And I think this helps kind of that development. So she tells somebody who she thinks is her best friend. And this shows you how desperate she is as an adult for a best friend. Everything she does is because she wants Natalie and Shauna and Thaisa to be her best friends, right? And she does crazy shit. Well, now enters Walter. And because of that situation with Misty, with her desire to kind of have that best friend, that partner, it opens up the world for her and Walter in terms of what they do with that. And I think this made that so at the teenage level. And that's what's so cool about this. And I think her killing it, that helps explain kind of her handling of the um, reporter and how she did that. I, I just, I really think this was important for the development of character of Misty. And I think when they did this, that told me as a viewer, hey, uh, Misty is going to be around for a minute here, both from an adult standpoint and a teenage standpoint. Yeah, I totally agree. I also think it's probably part of the reason she's afraid to open herself up to Walter, right? Because she told Crystal about this, and Crystal's like, what the fuck? Like, immediately turns on her. So I think on some level, she's scared anytime she tells anybody else the truth, they're just going to turn on her. Dude, 100%, right? And that, and that questions her desire to how real can she be, what type of relationships can she have, even though she's desiring that relationship. It adds to the complexity of this character. And that's one of the little intangibles with the show. The character development, I think, is just incredible. And they had to nail it, Mills. If you're going to do a show where you're giving a teenage plot line and then a real-life plot line, a doll plot line, you have to nail the casting and you have to nail the character development. And I think they did so with both with Misty. And, they, and they've done it kind of at large. All right. Well, talk about kind of the logical conclusion to an arc, maybe. What do you think about Coach Ben lighting the cabin on fire with the girls in it? There's no way that was an accident, right? We see, I mean, that's, he knew what he was doing. He was lighting them up because he thinks they're evil, right? He definitely did. And, and dude, I think he, te I think the show did a good job of teasing this inch by inch. All season. He's the one who wouldn't eat. The only one who wouldn't eat, right? He was the only one who wouldn't partake. And every time it happened, he had a look of disgust and more distance between him. Let's not forget, there was a very, very, very heavy scene earlier in the season, in season two, where he's going to commit suicide and walk off that cliff, and Misty talks him out of it. I'll tell people all day, yo, Yellow Jackets is awesome. It's worth it. Watch it. But you need your ass needs to be ready for how heavy this shit can be. This is a heavy show, dude. And I think this storyline with Coach Ben is very heavy. And I cannot wait to see where they take this in season three. Would you want Coach Ben to somehow still be alive? Like, it feels like he's the dude that they think dies somehow. And then he randomly shows up. And he shows up like, yes. what, is he, what does he have left? Like one arm or something? Like he's now missing both legs and another arm. And he's just like torso man. And he just won't die. And he's coming for revenge. Out of all characters that are alive in that cabin, as we look into season three, from season two, I think Coach Ben makes a ton of sense for still being alive. The best creeper character who could be alive without other people knowing, I'll definitely give you that. And I kind of like to see it. I would too, Magnum Mills. Let's go back to the present and talk about how the season ended, man. It was, it was, it was pretty big, right? I mean, obviously... The major thing is Misty accidentally kills Natalie. And let's not just downplay that, right? Like, I, I shed a tear when Natalie died. I love Natalie's character, adult and teenage. I thought teenage Natalie, that was my favorite character in the show for the first two seasons. Adult Natalie was very cool, particularly season two. 
um, where she gets off of kind of just being this crazy party, drug and alcohol, push it to the limit person who's dealt with a bunch of pain and you figure that out to then she starts to actually forgive and grow through the young girl that she meets at um, Lottie's camp. And ultimately she protects and dies for, right? Like I thought that was really cool, but bro, we've seen them go places when a character experiences shit. Misty killing Natalie, I think is going to be a major deal. I think Misty's gonna have to lean on Walter. We're not doing predictions here, but I think her accidentally killing Natalie is gonna be something that plays itself through season three. Oh, it absolutely big deal. has to. There's no way it can be just a thing. The one thing you can quibble with is how everyone ended up in the woods. Like, how does Callie end up there? How does, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting her name right now, but the, you know, like you said, the girl Natalie be friends, who's in the cult, and she goes to the, her house and everything, and they become friends. How did she end up out there? That's a little yeah. bit much. And even the idea that Callie's out there with a gun and then she shoots Lottie, at the end of the day, the idea was that so one of the main characters had to die, right? Someone had to die there. And Natalie was probably the second most shocking one, maybe. I think Shauna would have been the most shocking, probably. Natalie was very shocking, but, but they did, again, I've got to give a lot of credit to the writers, directors, and producers of the show. You saw it in the flashbacks of Lottie. They use Lottie's kind of insanity to promote this plot line. And when it comes full fruition at the end, in the way they did it with the montage, the perfect needle drops on the soundtrack, this was the most powerful death that I've seen in a long time. It was really profound and it was moving. And the way they timed it out and then they showed kind of Natalie on the plane. This wasn't just a death scene, bro. Like this was an epic death scene like this was something special man I, I don't think it gets enough credit man like and i love the way they teased it early on imagine being 16 in that cabin hungry on this plane crash and you're drawing cards to see who's the one that's going to die and and feed everyone that's powerful and the fact that that came back around just outstanding writing magnum else yeah i really don't Man, it's just, you hate to lose adult Natalie, right? It oh, hurt 100%, bit. bro. What, I love Natalie. You know, it would have been the easier move for them to, you know, take Lottie out. Obviously, Van would have been easier because, you know, we've heard she has cancer. So I give the show credit for doing the hard thing, taking out a character we like, you know, and a character played by one of the bigger names on the show. I'm excited for it. It leads me to believe that the show is going to do what they think is best for the story at the end of the day was there anything supernatural involved here you know then no fucking column a column b go fuck yourself is there is the supernatural a thing or no i'm, I'm calling it to you in the woods is there any bit of supernatural shit going on or is that just fucking people being people I'm going to say, yes, there is. And there, they, again, this show has done such a great job of balancing this just enough to make you think supernatural, but not leaning into it over heavily. Like they've done such a great job with the writing where it's like, okay, that could just work itself out. It's like me at the poker table. Is it just bad beats or is it something supernatural? right they've done such a good enough job to where you actually think man there is something supernatural here but it's not overwhelming and that's so hard to do it sounds easy but as somebody who's tried to write shows write movies write screenplays it is very hard to do to balance that line but the answer is yes magnum mills there is something supernatural fair enough that's why i gotta play them quakes man those queen eights that go all the way the Full gotta play queen gut eight. shot dude full gut shot and if this is the end of the adam martin storyline and the police are kind of like a non-factor from here on out are you okay with that do they have enough other shit going on that you don't want to deal with a competent police department or do you think that should always be a threat hanging over their heads i i think adam martin's done but i think the police remains because of the whole walter thing so i think they just kind of basically morph they kind of kick the can down the road here a little bit to create some drama. And I think that's from Adam Martin into now the police with Walter. I think that's probably where they'll take it. 
it's just kind of an extenuation of like the similar type of storyline. That's my best guess. I would like the police to be semi-competent. I'd just rather them not show them all the time, if that's the case. If they're going to keep showing them and just, you know, make them always kind of failing in the end, I would prefer just to, then don't do it. You know what I mean? And then just don't bring them at the end. It's like, all of a sudden they figured it out. Like, at least lead up to it a little bit. I think that's the probably the weakest part of the show, in my opinion, is the entire law enforcement law. But what else is new? Shout out Barry. Dude, everyone seems to struggle. But they don't have that. a big cat or something. You know what I mean? There's no big cat. There's no maid dog. They don't even have Albert. We wanted to figure out who our season two MVP was. So we went ahead and came up with our season two power rankings. Magnum Mills. Mythology sounds like math. So I'll let you do your best Clarissa explains it all thing here. What a great show. We ranked our top 10 characters based on what they did in season two. We averaged those together to give you our Yellow Jacket season two power rankings. And we're just going to give you our top five. At number five, we have Callie. Pretty solid. I had her at seven, you had her at five. We have a tie at number three between Adult Misty and Teen Natalie. Most notably, I had Teen Natalie at number one. Jamie G, you had Adult Misty at number three. At number two, we have Adult Lottie. I had her at five. Jamie G, you had Adult Lottie at number one. And at number one on top of the charts is Walter. I had him at three. You had him at two. Pretty good, just slightly ahead of adult Lottie there. I can't say that I'm surprised that Walter came out on top. He really seems that he's kind of in control. And there also, you know, might be more to his character. It might be more complex than that. Uh, JBG, any thoughts on Walter being up top, followed by adult Lottie, adult Misty, and teen Natalie? I think that just goes to show you that A, Elijah Woods really a good selection and then B where they took his character and I also think that like they have something with Misty um adult Misty she's fantastic we've she's been a great actress forever and ever and ever but like they've got something there I really like pairing her up especially now that we don't have Misty or I'm sorry now that we don't have Natalie I really like pairing up Misty with Walter this just I don't know man this was a very cool addition. Some of the best moments were kind of Misty Walter moments. The whole quirky kind of detective thing. Like, I'm pumped about this. And and let's not be let's not be shy about it. Walter's a bit of, of a mystery here, isn't he? Definitely intrigued. There could be a ton more layers there. It could be way more complex than that. Super intrigued. Well. I don't think it's worth to rank the episodes from season two. So maybe Mills, let's just give our favorites. I would probably have to go with uh, It Chooses. That's a penultimate episode there. The birth of, you know, well, or not birth of, I should say, Shauna's child. I, I thought that was very powerful. The whole season was, I think, pretty similar overall. Maybe started a touch slow, but I think probably the penultimate episode was the highlight. The finale wasn't as good as the season one finale, but the burning cabin on the end definitely left me with a, you know, that oh shit moment that leads me into next season. How about you, man? Any particular favorite episode? I'm going to agree with you. I thought the penultimate was was really good. I, I enjoyed the end episode maybe more than most just because I thought that it really kind of the ending, the last 10 minutes of that episode I thought was as good as anything that Yellow Jackets has done. Just incredible combination of directing, camera work, kind of the story coming full tuition, and then those needle drops. Like, I don't know, man. And that may just be a thing for me because that's my era. Those needle drops are my era. Uh, Mills, I know you feel me on that. We, you know, but it's like that combination really worked for me in that last 10, 15 minutes of that episode. So for me, I thought the ending was, the, you know, that final episode was was up there as well as one of my favorites. Mills, season three is still, unfortunately, a pretty long way away. 
But that won't stop us. Don't you worry. That will not stop us from speculating. We will speculate. Speculate we will. Mills, what are you hoping for in Season 3? And do you have any theories, dude? Hit me with your best conspiracy theories or other. Well, I think I already kind of touched on it, the one that the idea that Coach Ben might still be alive, maybe with only one limb left in the future timeline. I would like to think, you know, maybe, hopefully, that Natalie goes because she knows maybe her younger self set up a, a couple of backstops or in case of emergency kind of deals or something like that, as far as maybe exposing everybody else in the event of her death or something like that. That could be cool. And I totally think that somehow Jeff and Callie are going to have to kind of team up maybe against Shauna in season three. So now, like, you know, she was, the whole point was she was trying to keep her family together. And now her family, like, legitimately winds up working against her because they're scared of her or something. You know, one for me is I think even characters that are dead, we're going to continue to see a lot of them in season three, in the in the teenage year. Random thought. Uh, what if we get a random scene with Walter interrogating Misty's bird? I feel like he'd be that dude, right? Like talking to the bird, like tell me everything you know. I just feel that'd be a fun one. Just a scene of Walter interrogating Misty's bird. It would definitely be in the season trailer, but I think it would be fun. The bird has been a very cool angle. I, I think anytime they use that, like that was kind of the funnest part about her holding the the reporter captive in her basement, right? Was the bird. And that's saying something considering it was a stop plot line involving this reporter. What's she doing? Why is she interrogating everyone? The story of when they were at the, it like introduced the whole world of them in the woods. The most interesting part was the bird. So more bird for me, the more better. Oh, and uh, who is a Jess boy, Randy? Like a uh, more Randy, right? Like the dude living at the motel and uh, couldn't like, jack it into the condom so he put the soap in there and that's why the whole thing happened more randy dude i like yeah. randy he's like for randy he's our pondy he's the pondy of this well dude he was so oblivious to like what was happening like like shauna why are you here you're just one and then he just couldn't finish dude like we've all been there man it's when you can't finish it's tough you get in your own head it's a bit of a mental game magna mills have you heard of cell phones of viagra if you live in a state that has a, you know, age verification, either be old enough or get a VPN. Those would be my suggestions. Also, that goes into, you know, burying bodies. In Misty, apparently, not as good at disposing of bodies as we thought. You know, you know, her shit seemed like it was airtight, yet they found dude's body. So, I don't know, maybe Misty gets hung up on some other shit that we thought she had covered. Oh, and uh, give me one Thaisa thing. One Thaisa van thing. Does Van really have cancer? Yes or no? Does Van really have cancer? I'm going to say Van really does have cancer. Yeah, I'm going to say Thaisa, that. I'm going to say Thaisa and Van go further in their thing, and that compromises and brings back into the realm Thaisa's real life, which is a scandal involving um, a high school romance as a uh, senator, and then also a, a, a decaying marriage and an issue with a young um you know single digit age son so i think that that comes back into the into fold yeah to to roughly paraphrase p diddy tice shit's all fucked up now it's all fucked up now and she really needs to get a handle on that shit and somehow handle you know I, i'm just gonna call her the the night man i know her you know she's not a man or whatever but just doing a sunny thing because she has the night person the night woman night man sounds better but just the she needs to figure out what the hell is going on with her alter ego, other persona, her darkness, whatever the fuck it is. And hopefully in season three, we get some progress on that because really they kind of just like noped out of that in season two. Like she had a little peek and she's like, yeah, we're not gonna deal with that anymore. So uh, hopefully in season three, they actually circle back around and deal with that. I think they basically have to. Some things they could delay. I think that one is something they can't edge on. I totally agree. And Thank you guys for checking out this episode of Regular Dudes Watch Stuff. We're regular dudes, and we appreciate you watching stuff with us. Find us wherever you get your podcasts, on YouTube. We're there as well. Uh, you can find us multiple places. We're on social media. We're simply at Dudes Watch Stuff. Hit us up. Let us know what you thought about Yellow Jackets. Let us know anything else that you're watching. We're just regular dudes. We want to talk about watching stuff. Mills? 
Yeah, I mean, really, if we had a, an actual place of experience to come from, we'd either have to be time travelers or have been trapped in the woods after a plane crash. Thankfully, none of those things are true. At this point, the plan is that we're going to do episodic coverage of season three of Yellow Jackets when it comes out. We do not have a good name yet. We need a clever one. If you have a good one for us, you can let us know on the social needs. And the easiest way to let us know that you want us to do this is to not forget the flaps. Follow like and please subscribe helps us know that you like this helps other people find it and hopefully helps us get inspired to find a good name for whatever the hell we want to call our yellow jackets coverage next year we're excited about it either way if you had fun give us that thumb i'm magna mills he's jamie g and thank you for checking out us regular dudes.